What's up, y'all? We are on our way to another adventure right now. I'm Dark Sizzle, by the way. Brian, aka Puddin, is behind the camera, of course. I'm actually eating some unsalted nuts from Costco. They're actually quite delicious, a little snack. But I'm excited. Today we're doing something a little different. We're headed to Lake Okeechobee, and we're going to be crappie fishing. This video is going to be crappie, which is basically, we call it lake lobster. It's so good. This is going to be crappie, catch, clean, cook. Let's do it. Picking a big minnow that I want to put out on this 13 foot crappie rod we're using today. I'm going to show you guys what we're using. This is a number four Aberdeen hook. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a big minnow and I'm going through the bottom jaw up to the top, basically to the top nostrils, like so. Hook them. Then we're using a uni knot you can see here with a split shot and a swivel that's attaching my leader. This leader here is a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, swivel so it doesn't spin and get twisted up, we got the split shot, and then the main line here is 15 pound Andy. And I've got, again, a 13 foot black crappie, black widow crappie rod. We got a different, different sizes here. We're fishing over 15 rods, so we're staggering the sizes, all different size crappie rods, to stagger them out and put them in holes and whatnot. So it's a little bit, a lot of technique involved in this, and it's just a lot of hand-eye coordination and putting it in a tiny, tiny little hole, maybe 15, 20 feet out. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this guy to the bow and put him out where we just caught a giant fish, or we lost because we just lost a giant fish. Get over here! Oh, I just hit the other rod. Dang, but he's in the boat. Nice one, too. Just hit the other rod line. That's how close, that's how many lines we're fishing, y'all. It's insane. What do you want me to do? Okay. Oh my God! He's in the boat! Dude! Captain Rob just said, that's huge, man. And he was wrapped around another rod too, and we almost didn't catch him. He's like, that's gonna dehook him if you don't keep Still pulling. There. Dude, that's a stud right there. Dude, that's a stud right there. He got hooked inside, that's why he's bleeding, but he ain't gonna make it. But either way, he's dinner, baby. Look at that stud! He feels heavy too. How heavy is he going to be? He's pound and a half. Pound and a half. <laughs> Biggest one yet. That is a beautiful slab right there. Crappie, whatever you want to call them, spec. I know there's so many names. You guys are going to correct me on it. That is what it is. It's still a freshwater lobster to us, in my opinion. That is the biggest fish on Lake Okeechobee for me so far, as far as crappie goes. If you guys want to come out here and do this too, contact Captain Rob. He's been doing this for years. He does the inshore tartars for saltwater. He'll put you on crappie, bass, bluegill, alligator hunts, whatever you want to do. This guy is a real Floridian. He knows what's up, goes hunting. So sick, y'all. So check out his information down below. That's a beautiful fish. Biggest personal best. I gotta slow down that. I like that. <laughs> baseball catch. <laughs> that was a baseball catch. I guess I don't have it down yet where I'm like swinging them in 50 miles an hour into the boat, but. <laughs> 11 inches. Another solid one. He's nowhere one. near the other one. So yeah. Probably 13 inches. 13 plus. inch studs like that. Heck yeah. We get the line right back out. Another one, another one, another one. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Dude, all these monsters are coming out of one tiny little hole in the reeds. This is pretty wild. We're gonna get lying right back out there. That one is a stud. I mean, look how fat he is. That is a nice fish, dude. All right, in the sun, we got probably another hour till it officially sets and we're gonna fish into the dark. But I mean, this is no joke fishing. This is insane. Crazy, 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 beautiful fish. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. This is insane. These are massive ones. These are not, this is no joke. No joke. Captain Rob, that was a secret spot where the big ones are together hanging out in schools. Look at that fish. Nice one. All over a pound, the last few fish that we've caught. We released a couple, but I mean, they're quality fish. 
Heck yeah. That's a cold margarita. Yeah. Another nice one. What? Oh, he just fell off in the boat. That was close. And he broke the hook. Beautiful. All right. Bite is definitely turning on. Sun is starting to go down, but we still probably got another maybe hour till it really sets, but they're chewing. I can't believe it's going to be mayhem here in a while. I have a good feeling. Another one. That's a male. Dark one. It's a male. Yeah. Nice. That's actually the second male that's been in the boat. Pretty confident. Nice. Under. This that one. one. Yep. One. Grab it. Grab it. Grab it. Nice. <laughs> My belly stopped him. Brian, another. <laughs> oh, that's keeper. He's a me he's just medium. Just medium. Just medium. Oh, now you got good light. Nice. Woo! Take it. I'll take it. Nice. So we had a couple ones that popped off the hook right at the boat, a couple small ones, and now we're getting back into them. And that sun is just getting lower and lower, so I'm getting stoked. It's keeper though, going in the well. Green hole, green hole. Oh, yeah. Oh! That's <laughs> slime. <laughs> we got to do what it takes to get him out of there. I just slime. covered the boat. Got it. Some salad with your dinner. Salad with the fish. Hush puppies, a little salad. We got fresh salad and fresh fish. We are back at the house. It's the next day because we got home super late in the dark and it's blowing today, like blowing 20, 30 knots. You don't live in Florida if it's not blowing. It's super windy lately. I mean, ugh, it just sucks, but it is what it is. So we're going to flay some fish today, but we just want to show you guys our catch. Not bad at all. Put them on a chain. That's what real crappy fishermen do. <laughs> so I feel official now. Got my fish chain, got my fish strung up. We got some nice ones to flay. I'm stoked. We are going to have an epic session with cooking and putting in the house. And you guys have been giving us some awesome recipes. So I just pulled a nice one out. Nice slab. Slab is what you would call him, I guess. There he is. Got my land shark and we're gonna get to work here. Well, before I do anything, I wanna mention the fact that, yes, I should be using an electric knife sharpener right now. That's what a real professional crappie fisherman would tell me. I know a lot of you guys are gonna have tips and tricks for me. I appreciate it. Go ahead and comment those down below. But I'm gonna show you how I like to do it today. Smith is about to come out with an electric knife sharpener that they don't have available yet, specifically for crappie. But because of the coronavirus, due to that, it, you know, it's been slowed down in China, the production of it. So that's unfortunate. But we're gonna use a regular fillet knife, guys. You can do this with any regular knife. You don't need to own an electric fillet knife. So I just wanna show you guys that you don't need to spend extra money on a knife uh, on an electric knife when you can use a knife, per perfect four inch bait breaker knife from Smith. So I just made that cut. They have really big rib bones that stick out over here. And using a smaller knife, I can really get in a smaller fish like this, breaking the pin bones. And you can see right there how they're sticking out. So I like to go over that. And with an electric knife, I know that would cut right through it. But we're just gonna make it simple using it in this method. Slab it right off, as you can see. And that kind of reminds me of a tilapia, actually, just the way that those rib cage bones stick out. Flip them over, do the same exact thing. Don't forget about my coupon code, y'all, from Smith. 15% off your purchase on anything on their website, smithproducts.com, with free shipping by using my promo code, darksizzle15. So now we're just gonna slab this side off. There's the sun, feels so good. And then just go over these bones again. But I am so excited. We do not get to have crappy too often. So I just like to take my time here and make sure I'm getting every bit of meat that I possibly can. And of course, we're gonna be sharing this with our friends and neighbors and stuff. So none of it's getting to waste, y'all. All right, there we go. Got the two sides off. Boom, boom. But you can see right there just how those rib cage bones really stick out. I mean, it's quite noticeable. So I just like to go over that, but again, with that electric knife, you know, you just cut right through that, no big deal. But today, now when I skin this fish, this, this would work, but it's a little short. I just want to make sure that I get everything. So I'm going to use a Regal River 7-inch fillet knife. And this is actually not coated. You can see the difference, coated knife, not coated knife. This one is a fairly more, fairly, a little more, 
a little more inexpensive than the one that's saltwater coated for corrosion. So we're using saltwater fish, filleting saltwater fish today, so might as well use it. Just slab that right off. Awesome. That looks so delicious. It's actually one of our favorite fish to eat, even though I don't get to fish with them that often. But they are up there with the best grouper and snapper that swim in the salt water. I mean, these are quite tasty. And then you just basically take these little pin bones out, which are super, super tiny. Not a big deal whatsoever. And that's really it. Look at that. Check out that meat right there. That is a nice fish sandwich. I don't know, I'm not sure what we're gonna, how we're gonna cook these guys, but I am stoked. And again, you don't need to have that electric fillet knife if you don't wanna spend that extra money. So I just showed you, we got that done nice and easy. I'm gonna finish up the rest y'all, then we're gonna meet you in the house for the cooking with put-in portion of this video. What's up guys? Another great job filleting those crappy jars. So welcome to another edition of Cooking with Puddin. So today guys, we're doing a special Something a little different we don't usually do. We're doing a sandwich. I used to work in deli, so I love sandwiches. I'm gonna do fried crappy with some bacon on some nice, on nice, some nice bread. And we're gonna put a little uh, spicy mayo on there. It's gonna be delicious. We got everything kind of prepared, but first I wanna just go over a couple of Patreons. And I wrote them real big so I can see them. Look how big. Real quick, uh, if you guys are interested in supporting Draw Sizzle on the Patreon, get some exclusive content. Check that out, I'll put a link. But uh, recent Patreons this month, got a bunch of great ones. Edward P, Randall H, Michael W, Kevin H, Larry M, Sean O. If I said you guys' names before, that's perfectly fine. I'd love to say it again next month if I could. Uh, so that's that. All right, so I got, first we're gonna do some bacon. And thanks to you guys, great pan you guys got me. I'm so excited to use it every time. It cooks so much better. I'm finally getting the hang of it. Hopefully I'm not burning everything. Maybe just burn the bacon today, I'm not totally sure. But, um, you know, it just heats up higher than regular pans. Where's the smoke alarm, Dustin? We might need to get the smoke alarm. Anyway, so that's good. All right, now. <laughs> Jeez, Dustin. Sizzle. That's the, I'll move it over a little bit. You see, it's gotta be a little lower than usual. That's perfectly fine, just a little noisy. Uh, so for the mayo, we're doing a spicy mayo. And I got mayo in here already, and Darcy, and I pre-cut some of the items in here. So we got a bunch of garlic, chives, I forget what this is, cloves or something? I don't even know. What is it? It's parsley, I'm sorry. And then I'm gonna put some salt in there. And of course, guys, we always put the recipe down in the description of the video down below, so you can always get that there. And pepper, I'm really starting to grow. This pepper thing is really starting to grow on me. I know I told you guys a lot that I don't like it, but this is a quality one. Every time you turn it, it really puts out a lot of pepper, so it's great. So we're gonna stir this up real good. Okay, we'll get to that. Oh, let's check this bacon. It's fine, it's fine. No problem on that. Now what I'm doing over here, is I got all the crappy out. Oh, and Darcy told me I better wear my shirt this time and my hat, because last time I didn't wear the shirt because we did a little bit of an abridged version and you guys got all mad and I really appreciate it that you <laughs> thought of me. So I got the shirt on and the whole, the whole get up for you for cooking with pudding. So we got all this crappy. I put some salt and pepper on here. Well, first I rinsed them in the sink. Then I, I kind of just patted them off and then put some salt and pepper on them. And then I'm gonna just put them in some flour. And then that's gonna help the egg to stick. And then the egg is gonna help the panko to stick. All right, so we got a little bit of a process. And then I'm gonna do something a little new is I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator for a little bit while the bacon cooks. Uh, because someone told me online that's a good idea that helps the stuff stick more. So that's what we're gonna do. And I just dumped my fork into the egg vat. <laughs> this is cooking with pudding. We don't care, right? So basically this is gonna go like this. That the bacon sizzle is cooking just perfectly. I'm gonna get a plate. Da -da -da. You got the sizzle? And then into the egg wash. This is generally how you're going to uh, just bread anything. Chicken, fish, whatever. All right, then we're going to this panko. Nice, and I'm gonna do all of these, and then I'm gonna put them in the uh, refrigerator, like 15 or 20 minutes just to chill them, and then that bacon will be done. Look at that, looks good. And then we will be set to fry them up in the pan. All right guys, I'm back, I got the fish out of the refrigerator, and we're done with Darcy yelling at me about the burning, and the, I got rid of the fire department, the windows, everything's all cleared out, it's all good, don't worry. But uh, you can see, I, I did all the fish, 
and I got separated here. And like I said, we're doing a BLT. So I got the tomatoes and the lettuce already. I'm using peanut oil mixed with all that bacon grease that was in there. So it's going to be delicious. And I figured out you got to have this pan much, much, <laughs> much, much lower than we talked about or than I'm used to with the other pans. And I think I'm finally getting the hang of it. It's like basically on low. And I figured out it's going to take about two minutes to cook this fish. And you know, I always tell you it's 10 minutes an inch. But look how thin this fish is, right? So that's not very much time. And I'm also going to be flipping it. So it's going to work out really well. And I think I'll do the other batch separately. But we're pretty excited and the bacon came out great, don't worry. So we're gonna do this. We're going to uh, cook some bread. I like to cook it in the broiler because it's much more dangerous and you know I'm so good with heat adjustments and this kind of stuff, these nuances of heat use. And it's gonna be awesome. And I just wanna mention also that uh, I know the, the catching version uh, on this video, the catching segment was a little short, but we did a whole entire how to catch crappie video and I'll put the link right up here. And that was again with SNK, SK Fisheries on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. And that guy was really great. And uh, Captain Rob, and we're gonna be going out with him again, super excited. And uh, come take a look at this star sizzle. Of course, star sizzle is behind the camera. So you can see they're getting nice and brown. I should have put my timer on. I like to use a timer. Time to flip. Oh, does that look good guys or what? All right, guys, all done. And one little secret of doing this is you want to put it on one of these racks like this, which helps the oil, you know, separate from the fish and make, just keeps it nice and, cre nice and crunchy as opposed to putting it on like, you know, like we all do a, a paper plate with a paper towel on it or something. This keeps it really crunchy. I'm going to uh, finish up these pieces and then make some sandwiches. All right, Dust Sizzle, make that sandwich. Yes, I deserve to make my sandwich now after we spent so much time cleaning up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making fun of Brian. That's he's the, the best cook in the world too, but he's also the messiest cook in the world. Comment below if you agree. Actually, like Ew. this video if you agree. Share. You like how I swing the knife around? Okay, here we They're go. They're on my face. Here we go. Good thing that's not one of those ultra Good thing sharp it's a butter knife. Smith's product knife would yes. just cut my whole head off. Everybody makes comments about how I swing the knife around, but don't worry, I haven't cut anybody yet. You're not used to that lefty. No. So. What do you got going on there? Anything special? I'm just gonna put some of the herb mayo on one side of the bread here. We are not big bread eaters or mayo eaters. Well, but I'm not, because I'm fat. Well, neither of us are. No, I'm not allowed to bring any any bread into this house. But well, we are for this video. Right, so and welcome. plenty of bacon. So you're welcome. Yes, yeah, so I put a layer of mayo, put in some bacon on there. I love a traditional BLT, but having a delicious crappie filet on top is just gonna set it over the top. Mm. Heck yeah, tomatoes. Brian's not a tomato lover, but I like tomatoes. I'm gonna pick, these are so good too. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a giant sandwich. And then we got my fatten you up. iceberg lettuce. Pretty traditional. Boom. Mm, whoa. Look at that. Heck yeah, now it's time to try it. Let's go. All right, Dar Sizzle. Yeah. <laughs> Time to eat. So we have a crappie BLT plus a side of crappie. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. And I also noticed in our last video about you guys had mentioned how we like bump elbows all the time because I'm a lefty and we should switch spots. But you see how he just walked into the frame because he's, he's the last one to set up the camera. Yeah. So that's why we can't switch spots. Just there you go, up. a little behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or else we would, trust me. All right. Another, another behind the scenes item is we have eaten crappie for three days straight. Ah. It's delicious. I can't get enough. So good. Now you can also put lemon on this, a little bit of lemon and cheese. But you know I'm too fat for cheese. I know it's delicious. I've already had four sandwiches. Just kidding. Heck yeah. I was suggesting saute the fish, but Brian wanted to deep fry it. But it's amazing. Out of this world, amazing. And, dude, you guys, you guys gotta try this. It tastes like a traditional BLT, except it's that much more tasty because it has the de delicious crappie on it. But we could have also made our own mayonnaise, but we decided against that mainly because we don't eat a lot of mayonnaise around here. No. We just don't, other than when we make fish dip and when we occasionally make a sandwich, so. Yeah, but the key, really the key to this, and I've been working on this for a long time, is you know, if the flour holds the egg and the egg holds the panko, 
and then the, the holding it, you put it in the refrigerator for a little bit, seemed to work. Mm -hmm. um, and then you put it on a rack when you're done, so you can really make some nice fried food. Mm -hmm. Really good, crunchy food. Dude, this is so good. I know. Heck yeah. I know. Brian killed it, as usual. I almost burned the usual. house down, but I, I, you know, speaking of killing. But. We don't make a lot of fish sandwiches, <laughs> but this, this is, I think, my favorite. Favorite fish, fish sandwich? sandwich it's, better, it's better than uh, Chick-fil-A or whatever, McDonald's? I don't eat Chick-fil-A. I never eat McDonald's. I stopped sure. eating McDonald's 15 years ago. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I keep my figure, guys. Here's, no McDonald's. There's your secret. <laughs> your secret. No McDonald's. <laughs> no McDonald's. No don't Coke. Don't eat all day. Well, no McDonald's, <laughs> and I don't drink any Coke. All I drink is water. Or pop, as, as they say. I used to be that into it back in the day when I was in high school, but I watched that Size Me video or whatever it Super was. Size Super Me. Super Size Me. And ever since then, I have not drank, have anything from McDonald's. Pretty funny. Or Coke. All right, y'all. This was an amazing video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave us a comment down below if you liked it. And as always, you know, we really appreciate you guys coming on these adventures with us. We love each and every one of you. Let us know also in the comments what else you want to see from us in the future here. Mm. But we have a lot of more exciting stuff coming up. And we just want to hear from you, our true fans, because we wouldn't be here without you. So until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. I didn't get my land shark, dang it. Too bad. Crap. I would have go perfect. Crappy. Go perfect with this. Crappy. Go get one. Crappy. Go get me one crappy.